What approach to dealing with malware is to effectively contain the damage that it can do within a particular environment. And one way we can actually achieve that goal is via what I call endpoint sandboxing. And I actually talked about this idea uh, in the context of videos I did on sandboxing and emulation. So if you've seen that video, this is kind of a precursor to the video you're about to see right now. Um, I also did a video on networking um, based sandboxes, in other words, sandboxes that reside on the network. Uh, endpoint sandboxing is different, so um, just kind of be forewarned when you look at this particular video. Now, in endpoint sandboxing, the goal is basically to specifically contain malware when it hits a particular endpoint. And there really are two approaches to basically implementing sandboxing on the endpoint. So approach number one is to do what we call um, application application level virtualization. And the idea behind um, application level virtualization is effectively just to virtualize particular parts of an application, or really to create a wrapper, if you will, around a particular application. And it's more of a lightweight container uh, to help kind of contain some of the damage. Uh, and the other approach is to basically do a full on hypervisor. This is a much more heavyweight approach, but basically what it actually involves doing is, is really creating a virtual machine instance and that virtual machine instance basically involves, um, you, know, you can imagine, let's see, you've got a, a physical machine here, or let's see, you've got your, your physical machine here. And what you would want to basically do is create a virtual machine instance um, inside that physical machine instance. And this would be a pretty, a pretty extensive uh, virtual machine instance. It would actually contain really everything you could possibly imagine um, that could cause the system to become compromised. And, and that's obviously a lot of stuff. Um, and, and for example, that might include things like, uh, imagine you know, you've got your web browser, one application that runs inside of a virtual environment, or you might have an office productivity application, you might have um, you know, a PDF reader, et cetera. And these would all be running on top of a guest operating system. And, and in this case, uh, to make this all work, you could imagine really that this would be kind of a stripped down. So this would be a stripped down uh, guest operating system and, and the idea is that if it's stripped down enough you can effectively um, you know gain some of that performance back but it might be a stripped down version of an OS kernel um, and you'd have legitimate applications that might introduce malware onto a system running inside of this overall environment all right now the idea is that uh, you know let's say there is a piece of malware and let's say that you know some some bad piece of software gets introduced um, onto the system and let's kind of uh, you know put that malware here um, the idea is, let's say this, this malware gets on the system, maybe you're browsing the web and, and you got infected. The infection is basically going to be limited. It's going to be limited to this environment right here. It's, it's, it's not going to be able to get past this environment into the actual the host operating system, if you will. The actual underlying host is going to continue to become clean or continue to, main, to, continue to remain clean, rather. All right. Now, um, that, that's one nice advantage of the approach, and I think that's the, the main reason to consider implementing it. Uh, another advantage of the approach is that if you do detect malware inside of this virtualized environment, then it's easy to go back to a clean stage. So for example, you can literally revert back to the last clean snapshot and kind of clean up your act very quickly. And, and virtual machines are designed to facilitate this process of kind of going back to a, a clean snapshot. Um, but there are some disadvantages as well, and, and first of all, you know, when we talk about the idea of reverting back to a clean snapshot, you have to keep in mind that, that reverting back to a clean snapshot may be you know, much easier said than done in practice. And the reason for that is that you might not have taken a recent enough snapshot. So for example, imagine that you, you know, let's say you know, while you were in this environment, you know, before you got infected, maybe you installed some applications or you created some new files, you made some changes to the environment. Now, if, if you made changes, since the last clean snapshot was taken, uh, then if you found malware on that system and you had to revert back to the last clean snapshot, you'd effectively lose those changes that you made that, that could include documents or, or applications you installed and, and whatnot. Um, so certainly, you know, you, that, that's one disadvantage. And of course, you could come up with more complex snapshotting schemes. And, and in that case, you'll start to see an increase in complexity uh, as a trade-off. All right. Now another drawback to this type of, of full-on hypervisor environment is that, you know, the, the reality is that there may be a situation in which uh, it, it's sufficient to just compromise the hypervisor. So for example, let's say you had sensitive data of some sort. Let's say you, you, you were entering in a password here in your, in your 
know, um, maybe you're rendering it in your web browser, and your web browser is one of the applications running inside of this hypervisor, then, you know, in particular, what could happen is that, um, let's say you were infected with a keystroke logging trojan, and the malware was logging keystrokes. Now, if you visit your bank's website in your browser, and you enter in, let's say, sensitive credentials in your browser, then those credentials are being entered inside of the, the virtual environment and the malware is also within the context of the same environment. So, so in theory, the malware could actively steal these credentials, um, even though the, the credentials are being entered inside of this virtual environment. In other words, just containing a threat to the virtual environment may not be sufficient for ensuring an appropriate or adequate level of security. All right, hopefully that made some sense. Uh, another disadvantage, and probably the, the most critical disadvantage of this approach, the one I think that's worth highlighting the most, is it's, it's very heavyweight. I mean, this, this is an approach that would take up a lot of system resources. And, and again, if you, if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, every action you take that's running, let's say you take an application action or, or an app action that, that involves an application inside of the virtual environment, that action is basically executed by the guest operating system. Um, the guest operating system is obviously sitting on top of a hypervisor, which in turn is sitting on top of a host operating system. And, and that's really just a lot of overhead, many layers of overhead for each action you carry out. And the performance penalty is, is significant. I mean, really, you know, this is not, you know, this is taking place every time you do something. And I think for some environments, you know, if you do have a um, highly sensitive environment, then yes, it may, it may be worth making that trade-off for security. But you have to consider performance within this context just because it's such a big performance hit. All right. Now, to help actually deal with some of the performance implications or the performance impacts, uh, the, the alternate approach that I mentioned earlier is doing application-level virtualization. All right, and the idea behind application-level virtualization is to basically create a wrapper for each individual application. So imagine you had, you know, let's say you had a particular application here that was running. You, what you could basically do is you can imagine creating kind of a safe wrapper around that application that only kind of protects that individual application. All right, it doesn't protect the entire system, but it kind of just takes care of what's going on within this one particular application. Um, and the way this might work in a bit more detail is, is um, and, and typically, you know, when, when you see this kind of thing happen in, in practice, um, what's really happening is you're not creating a full virtualization layer with a full you know, operating system, et cetera. You really are kind of virtualizing specific system resources or specific functionality. So for example, you might, you know, virtualize a registry. Um, you might virtualize um, the file system, and these are kind of examples of resources you can virtualize. You're not virtualizing everything, only specific things. All right, and the, the wrapper is basically going to monitor the actions of the application. All right, so you know, effectively imagine it's a web browser, a PDF reader, etc. The wrapper is going to basically kind of marshal access to any resources that are being used um, within the context of this underlying application. So, for example, uh, imagine that um, the application wants to write to a particular part of, of disk. Um, what can effectively happen now is that the, the, um, the wrapper can determine whether or not that write access is allowed. Maybe, maybe it'll prohibit any kind of write access whatsoever, or maybe it'll just prohibit you know, certain kinds of write access from happening. All right, and this kind of approach actually can be implemented using techniques like API hooking, and, and techniques I actually talked about in some other videos, especially in the context of rootkits. Now, this approach does provide better performance, but it does suffer from some of the same limitations that I mentioned earlier. And, and I think there's also one other limitation that's worth mentioning, um, which is that you know, application-level virtualization really, in many ways, from a security perspective, it's kind of like a more um, watered-down version of virtualization. It's not full virtualization. So as such, you know, it may be possible to, uh, for malware, let's say to find some type of covert channel. Maybe it'll somehow find a, a way to kind of trick or get past, you know, some of the the protections in place. Maybe it'll find a way to get onto the main system um, by bypassing some of the the very restrictive, you know, appro approaches that are taken in this context. All right. So in other words, uh, you know, it, it may not be, you know, it may not be, uh, you may not be able to protect against every kind of attack when you're only virtualizing a small subset of features. All right. Now the other issue, which I think is an important one is around operationalization and or really kind of operational issues. And really the, the reason I mentioned that is that um, when you think about it, uh, you know, it, it, trying to provide adequate security while still allowing an application to behave in a way that allows the system to continue to stay useful is, is, is far easier said than done. There may be 
legitimate operations this, this application needs to perform on the system. You know, for example, maybe it does need to write a file to, to disk. And if you, if you prohibit any kind of file write to disk, then that would just be too much um, in terms of control um, or in terms of restriction on the part of this, this uh, application level uh, virtualization technique. So I think at the end of the day, I think this notion of endpoint sandboxing, you know, really, you know, it's a solution that provides or technologies that, that do endpoint sandboxing do provide some value, especially in the area of malware containment. Um, and I think that's a key word here. They really focus on containment of malware. Um, but on the other hand, I think that the drawback is that th there is a trade-off and you have to consider that you have to deal with performance issues and operational issues and so on. And I think that's important to consider um, whether or not you want to make this trade-off um, especially in the context of a particular environment that you're interested in protecting.